In this video, we'll be creating road strings off the super alignment center line that we created in the previous video. To do this, we'll be using a cross section template, which will be applied to the center line. We'll start by reading some cross section templates into the project so we don't have to create them from scratch. We'll select File, Templates, Templates Input. We'll then select the folder icon and browse. Navigate back to the Getting Started Basic folder and double click the Road Templates file, roadtemplates.tpl. For projects that have multiple stages, like large residential subdivisions, for example, each of the stages will likely have around four different types of roads. So you'd likely have a laneway, a minor access road, a connector road, and then maybe a larger boulevard type road. What should happen is the design manager for that project should set up these road templates, then share these templates through a templates file with each of the designers who will be designing within that larger project. This way, time will be saved because each designer doesn't have to create the templates individually, and it can be ensured that all of the designers are using the exact same templates, which reduces the likelihood of errors. So we'll select Read on this Read Templates panel. Then to take a look at the templates we've just imported, I'll close this uh, Templates panel. Then select Design, Templates, Create Edit. We'll pick the ABC icon next to the Template Name field. And we see a list of all the templates we just imported into the project. So let's take a look at the full left template. So we double click that one. Now each template has a few different parts to it. The first part is the fixed part, and this is the part that will always be applied when we apply the template. We'll pick the fixed button to open this part. So these templates are cross-sectional templates. And in this table at the top here, we insert the individual road links that will form the cross-section. Within this table, we specify two of the width, height, and crossfall of each link. 12D won't let us assign all three uh, because two is enough to determine the geometry of each link. Then specify a link name, which should fit in with your company's naming convention, and then assign a color to each link. So with the links filled out, you can look at the bottom of the panel and you can see what the typical cross section for this road looks like, at least on one side of the road. So this is a really useful little image because you can just tell looking at the cross section whether you've made any errors. Like for example, you might have accidentally made the cross fall of the KLL link, which is the first one in our table there, which defines the cross fall of the road carriageway positive 3% rather than negative 3%. So I'll just change that there. And then select apply. That little image will be redrawn and you can clearly see there that that isn't the slope of the road that we want because we would want the rain which falls on the road to run off toward the curb rather than to the center of the road. So I'll change that back to minus 3%, which is a pretty typical road crossfall value and select apply. Now I'm just going to update the colors of these links with something a little bit more realistic. So I'll change the color of the KLL link to Viz Road Asphalt. To do that, I'll just right click on this color field and scroll down until I find Viz Road Asphalt. Uh, the KIL, KTL and KBL links, I'll change to Viz Concrete. And the FBL link, I'll change to Viz Concrete 2. Then select Apply and finish on that fixed part. And the next part of the template is the decisions part. Now, this is no longer how we conduct decisional string creation, but we need to leave the button here for legacy reasons. Uh, there are some old projects still using this method but it's not for new projects. Uh, so we'll move on to the next part, which is the cut part. So select that one. 
And you can see the panel we get here is very similar to the panel in the fixed part that we input the width, height, slope, link name, and color in this top table. And we get an image of the shape we've drawn with those links at the bottom of the uh, panel. So this cut part is actually a variable cut part, as you can tell from the name of this panel. And what that means is that this part of the template will only be applied after the fixed part if the last link in the fixed part, so the FBL link, is below the tin that we are interfacing with, uh, which in our case is going to be the ground tin. So this variable cut part of the template is producing a system of cut batters and benching for when the road surface is significantly below the existing surface. Uh, I'm going to change these colors to be an alternating red and VisRock 2, just for the visualization. apply and finish. And the fill part of the template is essentially the same as the cut part, except the fill template will be applied if the last link in the fixed part of the template, again the FBL link, is above the existing surface rather than below as it was for the cut part. So if you pick that fill button, you'll actually see that there hasn't been a variable fill template specified. So I'll select finish. And then the question becomes, how do we neatly batter to meet the existing surface at the extents of our road cross section? And the answer to that is the final cut fill part of the template. If we select that button. This is where we specify the cut and fill batter slopes to interface with the existing surface. Typically the maximum slopes of these cut and fill batters will be determined by the road authority that you're doing the design work for. And in this case, we have a cut slope of one in one and a fill slope of one in two. Uh, the maximum slope width is the maximum width of this interface link that will be generated. And that link will be called int L. And 100 meters is more than enough because our design super alignment is very close to the existing surface. So we'll select finish. And now we've looked at all the individual parts of the template, there's one other thing to draw your attention to. Uh, you'll have noticed that we picked the template full left, uh, and there's also a template called full right. And the only difference between full left and full right is that the link names have an R suffix as opposed to the L suffix in the full left template. So I'll select that full right and then fixed. And you can see that rather than being called KLL, uh, in this template, this link is called KLR. And it's important that this is the case because what we're going to be doing is applying the full left template to the left-hand side of the center line and the full right template to the right-hand side. If we did apply the same template to the left and right sides of the road, then we would have multiple road strings created with the same name. This would be a problem because we'll be referencing these road strings later on. And if their names are not unique, then 12D doesn't know which road string we're referring to out of the two that have the same name. Uh, I'll just update the colors of the links in the fixed and variable cut parts in this template. So Viz Road Asphalt and then Viz Concrete for KIR, KTR and KVR. And then Viz Concrete 2 for FBR. And apply and finish. And then in the cut part of the full right template, just an alternating red and Viz Rock 2. and apply and finish. So I'll close this template create edit panel. 
And the way we apply this template is via design, apply, apply template. This method of applying the template is good for very basic roads, which we have in this exercise. However, in a real world project, the design of the road strings will often be much more complex. So there is a more advanced method we use. This method isn't covered in the Getting Started for Design manual. However, an additional learning video will be provided which covers this more advanced setup if you're interested to learn more and how it's done in the real world. So continuing with our basic template apply, uh, this process will be set up as a function, which again is useful because we will want to recalculate the road strings if our center line or the template we're applying changes. I'll call the function rs1, then press enter. And many of the fields in this panel will be filled out using this function name that we've assigned. Uh, you can check this has occurred by ensuring that you have the report file at the bottom of this panel named volumes rs1.rpt. In the next field, we'll select the interface tin, which is the tin we'll be using those cut and fill slopes to interface with. Uh, that'll be the ground tin. Then on the left hand side of the road, we'll select the template full left and full right on the right hand side. If our templates didn't already have those L and R suffixes, we could add them here in the next couple of fields. But these fields are optional because the text is grayed out, so we can leave them blank. And we already have those L and R suffixes. Next, we'll pick the reference string, so our super alignment. I'll select the string picking icon, then pick and accept our super alignment from the section view, because I have it there. Uh, we won't be using a hinge string, uh, and it's not important that you know what that is at this point, so we can leave that blank. Then we need to consider the start and end changes of the road string creation. Uh, because the stub roads are constructed for us, some road strings already exist. So we'll only design new road strings where they don't already exist. Uh, so I'll select the change icon next to the start change field. Then pick close to the start of the curb return string near the start of the road. So I'll pick here, left click. We'll snap onto the end of the curb return string and then middle mouse click to accept. So that's the start change. Now we'll go to the end stub road. Again, pick the change icon next to the end change field this time. Then again, left click close to the start of the curb return. We'll snap onto the end, you'll get the diamond snap and then middle mouse click to accept again. And that'll fill out the end change location. So now we can head into the models tab. And these are the models that are going to be created when we select apply eventually. Uh, but the ones we really care about for this process are the model for strings and the model for sections, because these are going to contain our road strings and cross sections respectively. Uh, the misc tab, just contains general settings. So we can skip over that one and click the tin tab. Now in this tab, we'll be creating a tin RS1 in the model lowercase tin RS1. And we'll use this tin to visualize our design in the perspective view. Uh, we don't need to worry about the filter or plot tabs for now. Let's just go ahead and select apply. When we select apply, we get a little summary in the message box, which is at the bottom of the panel. And that's that we have earthworks of 35,330 cubic meters of cut and 7,100 cubic meters of fill. Now you can open the volume report file by selecting the folder icon next to that field, then selecting open if you wanna view the full breakdown, uh, but we won't do that now. Uh, let's go ahead and add the road strings and cross sections to our plan view to take a look at those. Uh, I'll close this apply template function panel and I'll maximize plan view design on the left hand side.
I'll add the models. Now, before I do, back in the video on importing data, I talked about why we gave the survey models a survey prefix. And now that we've added some models that start with capital letters, I can show you what I was talking about. So as you can see in the model list, we have a model which starts with uppercase V, viz polygons RS1, but it's above all the models that start with that lowercase s survey. So as I said in the data import video, models that start with uppercase letters will be above those that start with lowercase letters. And because we'll be selecting these models that we've just created, so the cross sections, design, road boundary, and viz polygons models, more than we'll be selecting those survey models, we want those ones at the top of the model list. Uh, so I'll add cross sections RS1, design RS1, survey boundary tin, and survey road to this view. Uh, the model align was already on in my design view. So if you have align in this list of models to add, then you should add that one too. And then select add and then view fit. And you can see we have our strings and cross sections created along the road. And the most interesting way of viewing this data is in the perspective view. So I'll bring to the front the perspective view 3D. I'll remove the ground tin from the view and add the road tin, tin RS1. And there you can see the road tin really nicely with all of the colors which we associated in the links in the template. And by orbiting around, we can get an even better look at the road. One last thing to do quickly is to apply a tin render setting, which will give textures to the tin based on the tin color. To do this, select tins, edit, render settings. Then in this panel, select the RS1 tin. In the texture mapping field, just select the drop down menu and select 12D texture and then select set. Now, when you redraw the perspective view, just by zooming in and out, uh, the renders will be applied to the colors and you'll have a realistic looking design that you can uh, scroll around and check out.